And just to let you guys know, Domain has received a brand new UI. The site has got a complete makeover. It looks absolutely fantastic. And even though this video is under the old UI, you guys will actively be playing on the new updated version of Domain. What's up, B2 Capital G here, giving you guys a brief follow up to my introduction to the Domain TCG video. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video about the brand new online free to play, incredibly fun domain trading card game. I gave you guys a simple explanation of what domain was, how it was very similar to Yu Gi Oh! Duels of Roses, but had really nice elements of strategy and tactics built right into the game. Well, in this video, I'll be going a little deeper and I'll be giving you an explanation slash guide and analysis of one of the three starter decks. So this is essentially meant for still beginners, but people who are ready to jump into some battles and get their game on. Keep in mind, as I said in the last video, when you sign up for domain, you will receive one of these three starter decks as well as a bunch of booster packs completely free. And these starter decks have everything that you need to just jump into a domain battle and start kicking some butt. Of course, you can add extra cards to your deck if you want, but it's not necessary. Sorry. Now, when you're choosing your starter deck in Domain, you're going to have to choose between three options, the Bog, the Beyond, and the Flame starter decks. I personally like to use the Bog. It's what I take in the battle, and I kind of enjoy that one the most. So I am going to talk about the Bog deck in this video. Let's go ahead and start with the pros of the Bog starter deck. First off, I think it is incredibly beginner friendly. It's very intuitive, and it's just pretty easy to learn. The boss monster or the default king, which is the common mira is incredibly straightforward it's also just simple to understand and how to use it the bog also has strong mana production and you have healing cards already just built into the deck and then lastly it includes monsters that have indirect attacking abilities so that you can strike your opponent from a safe distance to where they can't reach your monsters but you're still outputting damage when it comes to some of the cons associated with the bog well the deck definitely in my opinion doesn't have as much raw power as the flame starter deck and I also would say that it doesn't have as many utility cards as the Beyond starter deck. So there definitely is a balance between the three starter decks. And you're probably going to find that one of them best serves your playstyle. But again, it is a very strong starter deck in my opinion. When it comes to the monster breakdown, let's start with the Chimera. This is the default king for the Bog starter deck, and as I said earlier, I like how simple and straightforward this monster is. He gains a bonus on swap terrain, which you can actually produce because of the swap monster's ability to create swap terrain on all tiles around him. The Chimera is also a good mix of mobility and power, as it can move four tiles in a straight line and boast a pretty nice 19 attack with 40 HP. Next up is the Shockwave. This is a really nifty the monster card it only has one hp so it might not last that long on the battlefield but its explode effect lets you attack all adjacent monster cards simultaneously this means that you can actually damage your opponent's king and all their monsters potentially at once next up is the miracle mage and quite frankly this might be my favorite monster in the entire bog starter deck its healing is invaluable in battle for your monsters its heal effect gives five hp to any of your monsters within a two tile radius and this guy costs zero mana to play so it's easy to drop and basically it serves as a medic for everything that you're controlling keep this guy close to your king and even when your king takes damage you can get a nice heal every single turn to keep him healthy next up we'll talk about one of the most interesting monsters in the bog starter deck and that is swift swift is a utility movement card that has no attack value whatsoever so it more or less acts like a spell and it really does help out with the fact that the chimera has probably the worst mobility of the three starter deck kings by playing the swift card you can actually have your monster move twice in a single turn this is great for escaping any situation where your opponent is trying to box in your king or even sometimes can help you go on the offensive and seriously close the gap between your monsters and your opponents this leads us to Maneater. Maneater is an artillery unit that is very good in situations where you may have your enemy pinned down or maybe they just don't have that many monsters with high mobility. While Maneater itself cannot actually move, it doesn't actually need to because it can attack from a distance with its shoot ability. And one of the things that I really like about this card, it has built-in regeneration. So if your opponent gets close and starts attacking it, it will eventually heal itself back up. While it does only have 14 HP and it's really not going to survive 
survive that many battles it is really nice to have some monsters that don't have to put themselves in a direct line of fire to dish out some damage then we have the swamp monster swamp is critical to this deck's success because it empowers the boss monster of the bog deck your king chimera it doesn't have much hp or mobility but by keeping it close to chimera you can essentially have the advantage anytime you're battling with your king monster we also have the ephemeral garden this is another monster that gains a bonus for being on swamp terrain this monster is a utility one that produces mana each turn this mana is used to summon powerful monsters like your second copy of chimera forest wyvern which i'll discuss next ephemeral garden is a double-edged sword however because its ability self-harm actually causes it to lose three hp each turn however if you keep the miracle mage next to it then you can actually mitigate that damage and you can have this guy on the board as essentially a mana producing factory so synergy for the win we also have the forest wyvern which is a really good just solid beat stick monster it has stats that can actually rival a king boss monster and of course because it's part of the box starter deck it gains a bonus when on swamp terrain which i talked about earlier we play the swamp monster so that can create swamp terrain obviously keep those two guys very close to each other and you'll be whooping your opponent easily it is a fairly low cost monster as it only costs two mana to play and a lot of the sizable beaters in uh, domains so far costs upwards of three plus mana so this guy is actually quite affordable in the early game then lastly we have the swamp terror which uh, unsurprisingly because it's in the box starter deck gains a bonus when on swamp terrain we've already talked about all the ways of creating swamp terrain it's relatively easy if you're playing this deck it also has a minor healing factor because it gains one hp back per turn change which is actually just kind of nice if your opponent doesn't actually take this thing out it will regenerate slowly but surely this monster is essentially like a mini version of the forest wyvern for this deck it's it's very good in the early turns where maybe you can't summon the uh, forest wyvern yet because you don't have mana swamp terror actually costs zero mana and it's uh, minor sustain makes it incredibly good early game now that you know what's inside the box starter deck and some of the synergies between the monsters let's jump into a game against one of my buddies and see if we can put everything together and get ourselves a victory okay so let's go ahead and hop into that domain battle and um i'm gonna be battling against my buddy ruben it is not hyperbole to say that ruben is uh uh, probably one of the best domain players on the face of the planet he knows this game in and out i am playing of course the bog and um he is actually playing with the flame starter deck the game decides that he is going to be going first and he has his taurus dragon on board at the um the top of the field that is of course his king and then he is going to play the pyromancer and i think he's just going to move onto some scorched earth now i think that i got baited here because he kind of just put that pyromancer out there and it only has four hp i'm like man i'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna just kill that thing immediately I thought basically because you know he has more monsters than me I'm like all right I'm gonna create a cup I'm gonna create some pressure here I'm going to summon another monster which is probably going to be the swamp terror I was trying to go a little bit on the offensive and I knew that even if my chimera my king took some damage i thought it was fine because i could just summon my miracle mage and i could just start healing up so i play my card i am going to pass turn the one man i can't really do anything with that but he tells me to watch my placement and i was kind of it was a little bit of a nani moment where <laughs> you know i kind of thought about it but then he plays a card and you can see he changes everything to scorched terrain and he gets a big bonus and he wrecks my chimera that thing is down to 10 hp at that point i knew that i had done goofed and uh, i basically Basically, because his Taurus Dragon is already stronger than my Chimera, I really only had one option or two options at this point. I could either just, you know, stay and fight, which almost certainly I would lose the next turn, or I can take my Chimera and I could flee. And um, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to try to get away from his Taurus Dragon as far as possible. I'm going to essentially try to create a wall or at least try to create as much distance as i can from the taurus unfortunately like the um you know this is where the mobility of the chimera is kind of um it's, it's really not all that great especially compared to like the taurus dragon and some of the other king monsters i did summon my miracle mage just so i could get some health back because at this point i'm on the back foot right i'm like all right well if i get the miracle mage and i can try to heal up then over time my chimera or my you know my chimera can get some of its health back uh health fact i did go ahead and i put my swamp terror in front of it hoping that he wouldn't be able to you know get through that or if he did he'd be perfectly fine but him turning all of his terrain immediately 
into Scorch just really wrecked me. You can see right there, my Swamp Terror, I mean, it bites the dust immediately. <laughs> His Taurus Dragon is on a Rampage, and I have to get, again, uh, as far as, you know, possible from this thing. When you're playing Domain, you really, really, really do not want to fight on your opponents. Like, if your opponent has a Terrain Bonus and it's their King, do not fight that thing. There is a high chance that you are just not going to get the results. Now, I did go ahead and I used my Miracle Mage. Even though it did heal his monsters, it doesn't really really matter to be honest because his monsters were at full health now at this point i'm gonna kind of do the same thing that he did i'm playing my swamp card you guys can see a ton of the field actually turns to swamp now i'm actually at the advantage and you can see i do a decent amount of damage to his taurus dragon i'm like all right maybe i can do this this might actually be the comeback he can't he probably just as I made the mistake of, you know, trying to fight him on his terrain, he doesn't want to probably fight on Swamp. And you can see that um, basically about, what, maybe 40% of the uh, map right now is looking like Swamp. So he probably is going to go for a tactical retreat, not wanting to fight on that, uh, you know, on that, um, on that terrain. Maybe he might attack my Miracle Mage. But again, my game plan is kind of to keep my Miracle Mage and my King um, pretty much inseparable. Keep those guys close together. So you can see that he's moving his Taurus Dragon. He does not want to fight on my terms. He wants to try to make it so that he has the advantage. He's just going to summon a monster and pass. I'm looking through my hand, and I realize that I kind of need some mana production. So I'm going to play the Ephemeral Garden, and I'm going to try to get some mana because even though I do have one mana, I've kind of been sitting on just one mana for the entire game. And the reason I'm trying to produce some mana is because I'm trying to drop some bigger monsters, something that can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that, you know, behemoth that he has on the field called the Taurus Dragon. So I figure I can go ahead, I can set my garden up, you know, keep it. It's, it is rooted, so it's not going to be able to move around. Maybe I could just try to, you know, get some mana production. Now you can see I have two mana, and maybe in the following turns I could drop a big boss monster. But I believe he's not going to give me the opportunity. In case you guys missed it, I did actually go ahead and heal. But um, it just, it's not enough, man. He has his Taurus Dragon. He's able to run over or basically kill my Chimera. And that is the end of the battle. So you guys can see that uh, these domain games do not take very long. But definitely, if you make mistakes, you can be heavily punished. I feel like Ruben in that game, he kind of threw out that low-hanging fruit. <laughs> and I took the bait. He threw out a very weak monster i immediately moved my king in for an assault and he um, he capitalized i was definitely ready for my king to take some damage but i wasn't ready to take that much damage but you know what that's why you gotta practice and um, that's why you have to go experiment with combos and become the best domain player that you can possibly be anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed that sign up again at enterthedomains.com thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos